own stuff. So what I mean by that is it's something kind of cool that I always forget cinema does. Let me see if I can show you in a, in a fast way. I'm going to take two cubes. One's regular size and one is like super teeny size. Okay. And let's just, let's just leave them where they are for now. And I'll show you how this works. You do a cloner. I tried to do it with the other ones and it didn't work. I think it needs to be the same amount of polygons or something similar to that. Um, but let's just make a regular cloner. Let's go to a linear cloner and let's just move it up further. And instead of a linear cloner, I'm sorry, let's do, I'm sorry, instead of iterate, let's do blend. Okay, so now what happened? Well, you have a large cube that is transforming into a small cube. And if I add more counts and less space, it's gonna do the same thing. If I add rotation, it's gonna clone between that, right? So now we basically built a stepping system from small cube to big cube, and it'll blend as many times as we want. If we do what we just did, but not have them uh, scale up, but actually scale within each other, and then do something weird like drop this all in an atom array, you get you get kind of concent concentric, uh, you know, uh, uh, I don't know, atom arrays, <laughs> I guess is what you call it. So this is cool. This is pretty fun. This allows us to at bend some geometry in and kind of make some some interesting kind of shapes here just with two shapes and a cloner. Then if you come to your, let's say, large shape and add more geometry, it will blend between that as well. So now I could do three by three. I could do all that stuff. Let me move my chat room back over, folks. Swip. Swip. So it is magic. Dang it. You could be talking about something else, but I'm just going to pretend you're talking about this thing. So it's pretty interesting. This allows us to get some really cool shapes, especially if we take our atom array and do it, you know, kind of smaller uh, scale little lines and bars and stuff like that. So that's cool. It, it works with all the shapes, obviously. Could drop that in, and now it'll try to clone between those two things, okay? Could put this at the bottom, and it's gonna kind of snap between those. I think if they're similar in shape, it's gonna be a little bit easier to clone, obviously. But we could do eight by eight by eight. Look at that grid. That's a nice little grid, right? And then we, and we got less clones as it comes in, and it's all it's all pretty fun. So uh, let's simplify our rotation and wham, there you go. So now we got this cool grid thing and let's, let's make the outer one a sphere. Cloner, see this is when it gets weird. I don't know the difference I don't know the difference in when it snaps. When it's a cube, it's fine. So I gotta, I gotta experiment more with more with that when I'm not live. But let's just stick with the cube for now. And let's go with maybe less. And then let's rotate it just a bit. Maybe, maybe if we go 90, it will like match around. That's that'll just be equal. So that's not cool. Maybe we'll do that. Just kind of get a denser grid. I don't know. I just I've been experimenting with this lately because I think it's fun, kind of a fun look. Now I'm gonna put all this in a null. I'm gonna tilt it back and kind of put it up on its edge here. And then what I've been doing is cloning onto this object. So then I've been taking spheres, MoGraph cloner, and taking the spheres and dropping their segments, dropping their radius down. And then saying, I want to clone on to an object. Which object? Well, I'm gonna, let me turn off the cloner so it doesn't break it here. I'm going to clone on to the atom array. And I want to clone onto the surface and just clone 100 of these. Let's turn it on. Okay, so now we have our spheres cloning. Let's go to our render instances and turn that on. So it's going to render a lot faster. And now we can crank this up. 
Okay. okay. Not only crank it up, but we can come grab a random effector. And now, so that's going to explode out a little bit more. That might be a little bit too much. I'm also going to affect scale so that they're all a little bit, a little bit different. Okay. And that's kind of the base start, right? So what do we go, where do we go from here? So let's, let's try an end side. I'm going to scale up this end side here. I'm going to sweep our end side, which is here. And I'm going to use another end side to sweep it, but this one will obviously be smaller. Let's shrink it down. Let's shrink this down. Let's make it in the Z. No, get the right. I can never get that right. There we go. So now we have our little frame here. We could just shrink this down. There we go. Okay, so now we got this kind of nicely framed little object. Real simple. And now we can do something similar with this sweep. We can take the sweep and drop it, it's cloners all the way down, folks. And now we could do this and say, well, let's just rotate it a little bit or rotate it this way a little bit. Let's just try to get a little bit of variation here so it's a little, little offside. So I don't know, is that a good start? Is that kind of a fun thing? Let's experiment with our camera a little bit and just kind of rough in what this frame looks like. And then we could start to go play with things like textures and all that stuff. So, you know, is this cooler? Is this too head on? Okay, I feel like this might be better. So I'm just, you know, tweaking this thing and moving it over. And let's try something like that. Let's try that. All right. Mm-hmm. Mmm. Whiskey. So now we have our rough scene. Let's start to texture it. I'm gonna open uh, top coat back up. You know what I used to do is close top coat all the way and then reopen it. And then somewhere, someone smart on Twitter said that if you command click on this little nub right here, it'll just collapse it into a little, just a few pixels. And it says top coat, look at that. And then when I want top coat, I just click it again and it opens. I've been using that constantly. So if I have no materials selected and I hit Chrome, it's going to make, make me a Chrome. I'm going to make our original Admiray Chrome. Uh, I'm also going to make a new, let's just say a new material that is, let's deselect everything so it makes a new material. Make a matte material and put this on our outside sweep. And then let's create a regular material and put this on our uh, sphere. And let's head into our luminance material or yeah, let's go luminant and let's add a variation shader. Now, I'm still learning a lot about the variation shader, but go check out Chad Ashley's tutorial that he did on this. Uh, the thumbnail is a bunch of pink and white skulls. It's really cool. I learned a lot from watching that. Um, but the main thing I learned is this. If you want to control these colors, one of the things you could do is pick the colors you want to gradient between. So let's just say it's, you know, uh, let's just say it's pink and orange. Classic, classic uh, mid mid 2000 MoGraph colors here. And turn up the gradient blend and, and say replace, okay? And so this, that actually got almost the way there. The, the, the way to get all the way there is to take random color and turn it off. So now you're literally, it's only picking colors between here and here. And if you're not familiar with the variation shader, what it does is it colors your clones different colors based on where they are, right? Or not even based on where they are. It's just, very, it's, it's a variation. And this is really powerful. You can use this not just for reflection and colors and stuff. You can use this anywhere. Check out Chad's tutorial. It's pretty cool. You can, you can do it anywhere. Um, so what do we do with this? Well, we're probably going to adjust those colors. 
but our Chrome is only reflecting these things, right? And really, I'm not digging the matte color on the outside, so I'm also gonna add it to the outside. So just so we could see it a little bit nicer, okay? And we don't have anything else for it to reflect. So we could also add an HDR into this scene. I'm gonna add an interactive render region. Okay, I'm going to add some render settings. This is part of top coat. You could add some render settings here just to get much faster uh, previews as we're tweaking all these colors and stuff like that. And we're also going to go to our HDR I, which I didn't grab, did I? HDRI, and this is gonna give us some light. Now, I think I deleted something. <laughs> Did anyone see me do that? I think I know what happened. Uh-huh. So what are we gonna do? We're gonna backtrack. Okay, no render settings. We got nothing here. We got a cloner. We have all this stuff being cloned. What is going on? Let's turn off our interactive render region. Let's just hit render. Okay, okay. We're back to some weird colors. Let's leave them there for now. But at least we got something going on. Let's bring our Chrome back. Not sure what happened there. Let's bring our HDRI Studio in. Collapse top coat. I'm gonna turn off the floor. I'm gonna leave the background on. I'm gonna give us a little bit of interactive render region. And what are we missing? We're, we don't have our clone, do we? Check this out. So our clone should be cloning onto an object, and that object is the atom array and um, surface clones. Interesting. Wow, look at that. That's weird. Let's go to like another frame. That is super weird. When I hit render, it renders all of it. You get some weird behavior. I've never seen this. Anybody else? That is super funky. Anybody else seen that? Render instances? It could be, but that shouldn't matter. Like I need instances. Like there's a lot of damn spheres bouncing around, man. That is super fun. Oh, oh yeah. That was a bonus. I like that angle better. Interactive. All right. So, I mean, if we just render it, obviously, we're good. Okay. So, let's keep it in mind. Let's keep it in mind, folks. So, where do we go from here? Well, let's tweak this, our cloner. Let's add some more of this. That could be cool bunch more of those things going on but maybe at a smaller number like really really thin little lines there just to give it some shape maybe just shrink and dink the whole thing I don't know that's kind of interesting what does that look like in a render that's kind of cool the background is too bright so let's go to our gradient and let's just pick some like dark colors. There we go. Aha, mucho. Now these colors are pretty similar actually. I'm gonna pull these out a little bit. And I'm gonna set these to diagonal. Now from here we could check this out. That's looking pretty good. I think we can get away with a little bit more of a color here. There we go. Let's do another render. Aha! Beautiful. Okay, we're on to something. Now, those, those spheres are too luminant. There's no shadow. There's nothing going on in there. So we could solve that with actual GI, but I think it's going to render faster, all this stuff, if we add some render settings. So maybe that's what's going on too. It could be render settings. So let's add our render settings back in. Let's go to light kit low and just see if our spheres show up. 
No. <laughs> no. Let's see what they look like here. Okay. About the same. But now let's go to ambient occlusion low. And just by adding some ambient occlusion, I think our spheres are going to stand out a little bit more. They're going to have a little bit more kind of, they're going to be set in space more rather than just be like super luminant. Okay, so now we're back to fixing these colors. So how did we do it? We said gradient blend, we said replace, and we said zero random color. Now these colors, let's let's not pick those colors. Let's pick some brighter colors here. These might be more a little bit slightly more pleasing. They're a little pastel-y, but I think they're kind of pretty color range. But you want to see how they set across the backdrop. Now that might be too pinky blue all together. What you may want to do is push the front a little bit more warm colors. So maybe we are orange and orange and pink, but we're a little bit lighter. So now our front is a little bit brighter or warmer, I should say, and then our background's a little bit cooler. And that's got a good vibe to it. Let's add some reflections to our sphere. So let's go ahead and Go to our top coat, add a lacquer. I'm actually going to over reflect this just a little bit, turning down our Fresnel. I'm going to check again on our interactive render region, see what the hay, what the hay is going on here. I could just try to clone off of something. Else. Maybe it's just the cloner. So let's see, let's see what we could do here. Take the cloner, put that in instead. No. Nope. Very interesting. So I have to render out to here to see our, our look. But now we got some reflection, so that's good. Well, now our our HDR is not really great. It's not really the, the kind of size I'm digging. Um, so let's go to our HDR. Let's uh, open up and let's go to Pro Studios here. And let's see if we could find something that is a little bit more direct. It's got some overhead lighting with some nice colors going on. This has some nice blue. That might be too blue. That's pretty, though. Let's kick that out and see what that looks like. So here's the difference. Here's that one. Now, this light is actually catching a lot more chrome. You can see the, the chrome's actually getting picked up there, a lot more detail on the bottom. I think we can get away with larger spheres slightly. I mean, two to three is 50% larger. Those look pretty good. The chrome looks good. The pink, eh. The pink is, is not my best friend. We could go super red to orange. I don't think, I don't know. I don't know about that. That might be nice. I mean, that's just a pleasing color to my eye. I just, I've always liked orange and red, obviously, but it's really not um, really blending with the background very well. I think it could if we did one more set of color, which was like almost white, where we just did like an off white. And now we have a little bit brighter going on. Oh, yeah. See, so just adding that little bit of, of off-white brightened up the front, I think, helped out a lot. So what do we do now? Okay, so let's get back to the overall structure of this. One thing that could be happening is as this rotates around, our cloner is not only rotating but it's also maybe scaling up. So now let's say 105, 105, 105. That might be too much. It's a little small numbers work here, but it's basically gonna scale up as it rotates around. And that's interesting. Let's go to 102, 10, oh, whoa, 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 102, 102, 102. That's going to be a little smaller, but then it's going to keep, and then we could keep it going. Like we could just scale this out until it's blinging all the way around. 
So now, oh, that's kind of cool. It kind of framed it up real close to the to the edge like that. So let's do um, let's do a full render here. Yeah. So Professor RGB saying there was no contrast with the background. Yeah, and that's that's what I was trying to fix here, right? And again, this is why I'm working with kind of simple shapes and all this stuff is because I, my my work my what I'm trying to work on is that is the design of it. And now that's too busy, right? We can all agree like that's got no focus to it. There's <coughs> those lines kind of detract from it. There's really kind of no sense of space with that much mess going on here. It's really not as bad, but with everything going on, it's just too too busy. So I'm going to remove the scale all together. Okay? So now we just have this shape here. And with this, I'm going to take the chrome. I'm going to duplicate it. I'm going to put the duplicate on here. And I'm going to open up our top coat. And I'm going to go make sure this chrome is selected. And just blur the, blur the crap out of this outside piece. No for now, less blur. I don't want it to be that crazy. I want it to be just a little blingy bling. There we go. Nice and shiny. Let's do a render. See where we're sitting. See if we like it. Might be too much chrome. It's like it's like not defined well enough, right? So if we take this and maybe scale it up and make I mean way less, way less, right? Like we're going to do like 50 of these. I mean boom. 3 3 And that's going to be give us like more of a geometric shape. I don't know. I mean, it it works, kinda. But then by the time you add all the other stuff to it, Marcus is saying depth of field. We could always mess with that, but I think if it's not working without depth of field, it's not going to work with. Sometimes it helps. Like if there's a pattern you're trying to do that. I'm actually this is I'm digging this a little bit more. I may add a little bit of luminance to this just to make sure it stands off the background a little bit more. Like see see now how it's got a little little color to it now. And even if we just like add a little little color maybe. Okay, so that might help it stand out off the background like just make it more of like almost like it was um spirographed on. I don't hate that. I don't hate that. I don't hate that. That point at the bottom is bugging me. Like I kind of want to just like flatten that a little bit to give it to, to get that point off the just straight off the bottom. And that's got a good shape to it. So now like let's make sure everything's centered the way we want. It's, and it and it looks good in a square frame before we before we start cranking on the rest of this. I like that. So sometimes when I like it, it's not my favorite thing I've ever made. But you know, at this point, I'm I'll, I'll just start kicking through some different um, HDRs. But let's remember where we are. In fact, let's save this thing. Okay, so this will be called, oh golly, it's called uh, Gritty, uh, Gritty Chrome, Gritty Chromey, one. I really know how to name things, folks. So Gritty Chromey one, it's saved now, so we can open up our browser and we can just go into something totally wacky, like a totally different HDR, 
and just kind of check and see where we're sitting. Because now look, look, look at how much blingier that this is. Totally different HDR, totally different look. It's not a studio look. This is a real uh, HDR from inside this uh, kind of like church uh, entrance here. Totally different look. Look at that. Did that better than that? I like the more blingy one. Right, but let's try one more. Let's try uh, the sunset. These sunsets have some sweet colors to them. Let's see what these do. And you know, we're only a few seconds for a render, 15, 20 seconds, we're getting a good vibe of it. So we could play around with low res settings and see what we got. This is more bluish. You could see the, the tint of it already. It's tinting everything real, you know, and I think it's too flat on. I think it's too flat on if we moved it. I think it might look a little bit better. Preview on, rotate it off to the side here. Okay, now we got the light go coming in from the side. Do we like it? That's the question. I dig it. So now what do we like? What do we like? We got that one. That side light is pretty cool. I dig it. In fact, I'm going to come into our luminance and just tone it down a little bit. Just so it's not, so there's a chance it can fall into the shadow, right? Does that make sense? There's not. If everything's fully luminate, there's no real bright side and dark side to these objects. It's just ambient occlusion. But pulling that down gives some of these the opportunity to fall into shadow a little bit. And then we could do something like brighten our HDR to kind of compensate for the for that brightness and just kind of kick more reflection and kick more light data into the scene in general. So now what? Now what we got? Okay, so I, I'm feeling it. I'm feeling it. I'm gonna shrink it down because we could always crop in. Okay, I'm gonna shrink it down in case we need more kind of like negative space around it. Make sure it's all scaled proper. A little, another little whiskey break. Interesting, interesting. So I'm gonna zoom back in just a bit so we have the res. And then we could scale this thing up. We're at ambient occlusion low. Let's go to AO medium. I don't think we need a lot more than that. Let's go to our output and set this to 1500 by 1500. Let's do a render and start to look at our blurry reflections, start to look at the anti-aliasing, at a full res here and see if this is something we can deal with or not. So I think we need a few more samples. It's re rendering relatively fast. So I think what we'll do is we'll wait for this render, okay? And let's th then, let's go work on it in Photoshop while an extra high res version is rendering. I've been doing that a lot lately, kicking off kind of a lower quality version working on the overall color and the and the vibe of everything in photoshop while we're waiting for the 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 final bit to 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 render in in like super high res because this will be finished here in a second yeah and it's a little mungy like i don't you oh, i'm sorry you probably can't see it on the stream but it's a little little wacky it's not bad. The anti-aliasing on some of those real thin lines. When you're working with that real thin line and reflection and all that stuff, it could get real a little bit tricky. Okay, so literally, just literally, I'm just gonna copy this. I'm gonna go to Photoshop. I'm gonna make a new thing. I'm gonna paste it. Okay, that this will work fine for now. I'm gonna crank this up to AO high. 
Okay, I'm gonna go back, make sure that the settings are the same. And we're just gonna let that render in the background while we mess around in Photoshop, okay? So we can, can I grab the bottom? Oh, come on, Photoshop. Full screen, there you go. Okay, so what what do I what do I start with? I often start with a gradient. Full black to white gradient, circle gradient, and I'll make a new layer, and I'll just make a circle gradient, okay? This is multiplied on top, and this is our vignette. Now often, we're gonna, have, and now I should be working in 16-bit, right? Even though I pasted 8-bit, I should be working 16-bit no matter what. Even if your source is 8-bit, you should be working in 16 or 32 to, to just so you're banding and all that stuff. So now this is gonna pull our eyes a little bit more into here, but now everything got a little bit too dark. So we could compensate by pulling the curves up, darkening the outside more, and maybe pulling our black point up so it's not super, super black. And I think something else that this might kind of help with is adding some sort of light glow on one of these sides just to show our eye that there's a light source in the scene. So I'm gonna grab an, an ellipse. I'm just gonna drop this ellipse on there and just, I think it'd be more like a sun, a little bit of a sun glare, like this color. Kind of the same color as a lot of the colors we picked, but it's like color of the sun too, right? So let's go blur this. I'm gonna rasterize it, go old school. We'll blur this and we're gonna screen it on top. Okay, I'm gonna put it under our vignette and then I'm gonna dial it back using my numbers at the top of the, the thing here. I'm just gonna dial this back to give us just a little bit of like a sun glow over our whole thing. That's just gonna, it might be a little bright, right? So we're just adjusting, adjust, adjust. I'm hitting our numbers again, moving this, dialing it up, dialing it down, playing with our curve again to dial up and down our brightness because now here's our white point. Here's kind of our gamma that really makes it stand out and that looks good, right? But that looks, you know, you gotta, you gotta give it a second. After a second, it looks a little hot, a little unnatural, hot in a bad way. Sometimes hot is bad. Sometimes hot is good. Another thing I'll try is grabbing a hue saturation and just kind of dialing up some of these colors just to see what it would have looked like if I went like totally backwards. I think I, I like our colors, but you could also dial in up and down specific colors too. Obviously you could go in and pick the greens or blues, but overall, you know, I like, I like the look of this. I like the shape. Kind of wish these lines were even thinner. Right, so we could go see how we're doing on our big render. And this is gonna take a while, right? This is our last big final render. And you can see in your in your viewport, it's probably not a big difference between this, which took a minute, and this, which is at three minutes already, and it's only that far. But to me, I'm seeing cleaned up reflections, all that kind of stuff, right? Better ambient occlusions, cleaner, everything's a little bit cleaner. So we can wait for this. But because we already waited long enough on this background piece, I'm gonna thin out that top bar even more. 0.18, no, 0.1. But here's what I'm gonna do. I'm gonna go back to our ambient occlusion medium and redo it. I'm just walking you through my process. This is when I'm making a daily render, I'm like constantly rethinking it, rethinking it. Like I get all the way to the end, I'm like, uh, is that too thick? Maybe the inside should be thicker, right? So many things we could decide. And I'm, I'm bummed the, the spheres are not showing here because it will it would help us to be able to see it in the viewport and make changes, you know what I'm saying? Uh, let's save another version of this out, of the scene file out. Greedy Chromie 2. Okay. And let's see if our thinner lines, so check that out. That's thick, that's thin. Real subtle, but I think it might be better for us as we go. Um, K 
Keza is asking why I don't use multi passes. I, um, for these types of renders, never, never needed multi pass. I want to get it as close as I can here. And for me, I kind of think like a photographer uh, when it comes to this stuff. I shoot, when I shoot in photography, I shoot raw. And then when I bring it in, there's really, I don't get a lot of other data other than the pixel data. And, and that's just kind of how I work. That's just kind of how I work. It's not right or wrong. It's just how I work. So I've never really, um, I've never really focused too much on, on having all those passes. Now there's actual, you know, people that have been working in the industry for years and years and years that couldn't live without their passes. Um, but it's also changing like octane makes it. So, uh, I've heard many of my friends that were very compositing heavy switch to octane and say, I don't need to composite very much because I get to tweak so much in cinema. I don't, I don't have to really change stuff in the, in the after. Um, so if you need multi passes for what you're doing, do that. Um, if you need it for, you know, um, depth of field or you want to isolate an object and be able to tweak colors that way, do it, you know, uh, for this, it kind of gets in the way for me. So here's, um, the thinner version, thicker, thinner. That's it. That's the only change I made. I don't mind the thicker one actually, now that I waited for it to render. I think that's it. So I think what I'd do from here is crop it in a little bit. I like all the negative space that we have, but I feel like it's a little bit much. We'll just dial this in here. I don't know. Swoop. More, less. I like it. All right, so I like the thicker one. What are we gonna do? We're gonna go back 1.8 or 0.18. And now we're gonna go to AO high, physical render, ambient occlusion. We don't need that much. We do need some nice settings for this. It's a little bit washed out right now. We're gonna pull back. We're gonna pull back, give a little bit more contrast. But now the hue and saturation is gonna be just a saturation thing. I'm gonna pull back. I mean, it's starting to look like neon, right? I'm just gonna pull back a little bit. Not a lot. I don't wanna pull too much of the color out. But as you add contrast, you're gonna you're gonna amp up your saturation. In some some cases, a little bit much. Is it all becoming too unnatural? Turn off the curves. What do we got? That's too flat for me. Let's look at the original. Here's the original. Looking better. Too too much glow. Not enough glow. What are we gonna do? What are we gonna do? That's looking good. All right, I think that's it. We're gonna let this render. We'll get it going. Um, that's a that's a that's a wrap. I think we got two two daily renders, and uh, and uh, that's good. You know, I am responsible for one uh, every week for the daily render page, and uh, I'm gonna be gone. I'm gonna be gone for a few weeks, uh, out and about on a road trip. So you know. I'm, I'm being proactive. I'm making some extra ones, putting them in the queue, getting ready. So you're going to see this. You'll see it down the road someday. Here's, here's this render. Um, but, uh, now, you know, now we have something to reference to come back to show you how I made it. I made another one recently. If you want to follow us, if you aren't already, you can, uh, follow us at Instagram, Instagram slash grayscale gorilla. Chris's latest one is so cool, isn't it? Isn't that awesome? 
Here's another render where I use this similar technique as more of a studio render. In fact, um, this is just one light kit, light. That's how this one was made. So that's kind of interesting uh, look, but similar. We got the grid and all that stuff. In fact, uh, uh, we have a question here. What did I use to make the grid? This is how I made it. Just made it out of a trapezoid kind of shape instead of, or a, or a platonic shape instead of a cube. That's the only difference. In fact, that may, in fact, looking at this makes me want to thicken up that grid, doesn't it? Like I can't, I mean, I can, I guess, whatever. It's, nothing's locked, but you know, I dialed in that atom array number really early on. I never really, never really changed it. But you know, th then we got to stop this render. Is that, you know, we got to stop all this. Is this something we want to do? Swip. So this actually chunks it up a little bit more, makes it a little bit more hefty, makes it feel more substantial with the other thing kind of flipping around, which I don't mind. I'm in. I, I sold it. I sold myself. I'm actually going to add more, more cubes or more spheres too. So, you know, just double stuff. I don't know. I Like a real designer is probably looking at this and going like, don't just randomly type numbers, but like, listen, this is how, this is how I, this is how I work. Don't look good, double it. Don't look good, get rid of it. Don't look good, try five of them. Don't look good, there's not enough contrast. So we have our big shape, we have our medium shapes, we have our small shapes, and this is looking pretty, pretty good. Is it, is it looking better than, than this? More spheres. I mean, once it gets composited, I think it's going to be good. All right, so let, there we go. Kicking that off. Boom. High res, baby. Get the team render going and uh we'll we'll uh we'll clear out. Let's clear out. It is random. It is random. Matt, <laughs> Matt, go to bed. Ivan, go to bed. Good to see you, man. Uh